Ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. Please bring your tray tables to the upright and locked position. Please fasten all seatbelts. We'll be landing soon at Lawn Care Not Headquarters. Thank you and enjoy the flight. What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So if I'm super honest with you guys, I'm a little bit behind on topics to talk about here on the lawn. I've been doing a lot of work for Toro, as you guys know. By the way, according to Toro's lawyers, I need to tell you that this particular video is not sponsored by them. Even though a Toro product will be showing up in the video, they didn't sponsor it. It just happens to be the only lawnmower available to me. All that aside, what I've decided to do is go ahead and do a little mow and talk. So I'm gonna enjoy my mow. Remember the hashtag I'm trying to start here, enjoy the mow. And while I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and talk over the video and give you guys some summer lawn tips and this will be for cool season lawns those of you guys up north and in the midwest and warm season lawns and then for those of you that are out west hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Dripping lights. Hit the switch All right, so let's make this short and concise as possible. The first thing is people ask about summer fertilizer. So no matter where you're at, north, south, east, or west, I always recommend a full dose of Milorganite on 4th of July or sometime right in that area. I think 4th of July falls on a Tuesday this year, so maybe you wanna do it on the Saturday or Sunday before, or if you're a total purist, you'll do it on that day. Cause you love that sweet smell of Milorganite mixed with the afternoon barbecue and the smell of spent fireworks in the air. Now the other thing is a lot of, a lot of people have asked me, Alan, what do you think about the reduction in iron from Milorganite? And here's what I think. I think I don't notice any difference. Remember that iron is a micronutrient, so you don't need that much anyway. And if you're doing a full dose, which for those of you outside of Florida is 15 pounds per 1,000 square feet, you're getting 0.75, three quarter pound nitrogen, and you're also getting plenty of iron with that. So just like you guys always do, if things get a little rough or you think you need just a little bit more green, then throw her down and go all cowboy. As far as me with my lower dose that I've been doing here in Florida, six pounds per thousand square feet, I'm getting just under one third pound in. So as far as things go, I haven't noticed any lack in results at all. Also remember that the extra green blue that you get from iron only lasts for a few days anyway, and it's the good organics that are what keep things nice and green long term and keep your soil healthy. Next, let's talk about insects. Now, I've already talked about grub worms. I'll link in the description below to a video I just did on that that talks about different products that you can use and also kind of an all-purpose product that I found that not only is gonna prevent grub worms, but can also wipe out some of the nuisance pests or other damaging pests that we're about to talk about. So for those of you that are up north, sod webworm is really the main concern that I have for you. Just watch for moths flying up when you mow any time during the summer. The thing about sod webworm is if you're not irrigating, your lawn's gonna kinda go dormant anyway, and the sod webworm can be there doing damage and you don't know it, number one, because you're not on the lawn that much to monitor for the moths, but number two is you just don't notice the brown because the fact that your lawn is dormant. Then there's this kinda in-between semi-dormancy stage where you're getting some rain, but you're not supplementing with irrigation, and that's where I see the biggest problem with sod webworm. So just watch for those moths flying up. Also keep in mind that the moths don't do the damage, but it's the larvae that do, and they can produce two or three generations in a season depending how long summer goes or how long winter holds off and in the south definitely two or three generations of sod webworm now in the south we call them something a little different army worms but they're all just part of that same kind of bug family if you've noticed a sod webworm issue in other words you've seen the moths that means the larva will be present there are a couple products you can get anything containing dialox will be a 
nice quick kill on them, as well as seven. Seven we're gonna talk about a little bit more in a minute. It's a good all around pest control and it will also work for sod webworm, north or south, just fine for all grass types. Now, additionally in the south, Bermuda, St. Augustine, you guys need to watch also for chinch bug. Chinch bug can start doing damage down here in Florida like in March or April, but really it's summertime when you're gonna see the biggest damage, late spring, early summer, into summer. So if chinch bug has been a problem in your area, that's something to consider, something to monitor for. You'll see these areas of the lawn. Chinch bugs, they kind of feed in groups like together. They're like a communal insect. And so you'll see these areas of the lawn that kind of turn this orangey cast to them. And, and that's how you know you have a uh, chinch bug. I don't have any pictures for you right now, but again, if it's something that you're concerned about, you can go ahead and put down Dilox or Seven, and it'll take care of any sod webworm concern you have or armyworm, as well as chinch bug. Just keep in mind, you may need to reapply in later summer or early fall. Now, the big one that I want to talk about are nuisance pests. These are things like fleas, ticks, ants, chiggers. It doesn't really matter where you live. You have all kind of different nuisance pests, but one thing I want to talk about are mosquitoes because they're a problem everywhere. Now this is a secret that I never shared on the channel, but I used to use every single year, and that is that I would treat my lawn with a nuisance pest control application. Again, seven or Dilox typically by Fenthrin will also work fine, but I would treat the lawn for nuisance pests about five to seven days before 4th of July. Why? Because you're going to be in the lawn 4th of July, a lot of people wearing shorts and flip-flops, that kind of thing, and mosquitoes do infest themselves and reproduce in the lawn, especially if you ear irrigate well and you're getting rain and your lawn is thick, it leaves a lot of areas where they can congregate and reproduce and you will get bit to death. I used to walk into my lawn bare feet and I would get bit horribly. So in order to enjoy the lawn from these nuisances, I would apply, typically I used bifenthrin, but again, seven dilox, that's probably where you should go if you're worried about other insects, but these will kill off the ants, the fleas, the ticks, the chiggers, and the mosquitoes. Now, you will notice a reduction in mosquitoes in your lawn if you treat it, I promise you, but mosquitoes do travel. They don't have a huge range, but they will travel, I think, several hundred yards just to get a meal. So what you do is have everyone in your quadrant treat. You do your lawn, have your neighbors do theirs, the people across the street. If you can do that, I guarantee you will see a noticeable lessening of nuisance mosquitoes getting on you and your family. I promise you that'll work. No one can sell it that way. No one's gonna sell it that way. No one's gonna put it on a package, but I'm telling you, it works. Disease problems, for those of you up north, Dollar Spot's gonna be the big one for you right now. You'll notice it's showing up. I did a video on this already. I'll link in the description below. If you do have a Dollar Spot problem, the best thing to do is prevent it, but it's maybe a little bit too late for some of you as it may be showing up. I'm not sure what the weather's been looking like up there, but if you do have a problem with Dollar Spot, you got a couple of choices. Number one, you can just kind of let it go. It's gonna be ugly, but it's not gonna cause any long-term damage. Typically, to the lawn. But if it is something that bothers you and it's already infested itself, you can go ahead and prevent any future damage from it or stop it in its tracks. You're not gonna cure the lesions that are there now, but you'll help to stop it in its tracks so it won't get any worse. And I recommend, I mean, the best fungicide I've ever used is Banner Max, which is propiconazole. I think it's over 14% active. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can pick some up. You don't have to buy Banner Max. You can actually buy generics now that are much cheaper that work really well. They're a liquid, you mix them in a pump sprayer and you spray them on the lawn. They work really, really well. For the South, Bermuda and St. Augustine, brown patch is a problem for us and that's typically gonna be late summer, fall, but we wanna prevent sometime in the August timeframe is when I would go ahead and apply propiconazole as a preventative treatment for brown patch in Southern lawns. So there you go guys, I know this has been a quick video and I know that I can't cover everybody with everything. Again, most of what I've covered today though has been covered before and I'll link in the description below to all those videos where you can get all the information you need as well as any products I've mentioned in the video. A link is to where you can pick those up and buy them yourself. With that, I'm Alan Hain, The Lawn Care Nut. And I know this has been a little quick, but I'm just trying to get this out there. I hope you've enjoyed some of the footage too. Please leave your questions in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you in the lawn. Thank you.